Hey there, gentlemen. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be diving into the harsh reality of modern dating to get you the girlfriend that you've only been dreaming of. I'm Adam Lane Smith, and I make relationships better. Today, we're going to explore how to navigate modern dating challenges to optimize your online presence, master the art of conversation, and build deeper connections that lead to more fulfilling and secure relationships where you can feel better. Before we kick off this journey, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an opportunity to enhance your dating game. Trust me, the insights and strategies that we're about to uncover will transform your approach to modern dating. You can also find a ton of relationship resources on my website at adamlanesmith.com. All right, let's dive in. Gentlemen, here's my guarantee. By the end of this video, you're going to possess the knowledge and tools you need to tackle the challenges of modern dating head on. If you've been struggling and feeling hopeless today, we're going to fix that. We're going to delve into optimizing your online presence. We're going to show you how to master the art of conversation in an easy way. And we're going to have you navigate those first three dates. They're so crucial. I'm also going to help you hone your emotional intelligence. A lot of people argue about if emotional intelligence is real or not. The people who argue about it tend to struggle getting dates. So I'm going to show you how to build that. Don't worry about it today. We'll take care of you. Each step that we're going to cover today is designed to empower you. I hate that word, but in this case, it's useful. It will give you the power you need. Let's say that to empower you to build more fulfilling and secure relationships. So let's embark on this dating masterclass together and unlock the keys you need to succeed in modern dating. Now, as they say, we've got to name it to tame it. So let's begin by exploring the specific challenges you men face in the modern dating world. There's a lot of them. To provide you with a comprehensive understanding of the biggest topics, at least, I've gathered insight from various resources and personal experiences that my coaching clients have reported to me as horribly frustrating. I have a large community that I work with, a coaching community. A lot of the men in there are very vocal about some of these challenges. I pulled data from them. These are things I help men fix over and over and over. So it should be very, very useful for you if you're in the modern dating pool today. By identifying these challenges, we can better equip ourselves to overcome them and to build successful relationships. Problem number one that I hear a lot, changing gender dynamics. In recent years, the landscape of dating has undergone a significant transformation. This has been accompanied by a lot of shifting gender dynamics. Those traditionally defined roles and expectations we all kind of grew up hearing about have given way to a very confusing approach where no one seems to know what's going on. While this change is often assumed to be positive, right? We're, we're hearing about less abuse, less victimization, less oppression, things like that. It's also left many men grappling with uncertainty about their place in the dating process. What you're supposed to say, how you're supposed to act, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. You get a lot of information about how old styles are still, ex old, old expectations are still there, but new restrictions are placed on you. Many men have to, they feel like they have to walk a tightrope, balancing perfectly and to be the perfect thing that other people expect them to be. You don't have to be. I'm just going to tell you that. But in this new era, men often find themselves in that delicate balance. They're torn between being assertive and careful. The fear of appearing too aggressive or dominating can make it challenging to really initiate those conversations or to pursue romantic interest or to express interest without feeling like you're overstepping boundaries. And you don't want to go to jail. You don't want a restraining order. You don't want to lose your job. 100% get that. You're supposed to be a man, but also be a therapist and a security officer and a consent expert and a lawyer and a best friend and an entertainer. And the list goes on and on and on. And you're supposed to do all of this while navigating those dangerous risks that anytime you could be called out, lose your job, again, all of those things. A lot of guys are cracking under this pressure. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Navigating this evolving terrain requires a deep understanding of consent communication skills and the ability to read verbal and non-verbal cues perfectly. It's crucial for men to learn to be respectful and empathetic and attuned to the needs and desires of their potential partners. And I agree with that. The flippant tone is coming from, men. let's listen to this list of what men are expected to do now. It's brutal, especially if they want to avoid those legal risks that we talked about that can arise even from innocent misunderstandings. But you shouldn't have to run yourself to death trying to stay safe either in the dating situation. It's not going to work. We're going to talk about that more later on about how to get through that. For now, striking the right balance between confidence and sensitivity is key to establishing and connect, building those connections that can be built on trust, mutual understanding, a lot of those important pieces that are vital to keep you safe and help you build a relationship at the same time. I teach this to those men in my private coaching community all the time, and I'll show you how to do this in the second half. It may sound like a tall order, but we can get you there. Problem number two is heightened selectivity. 
In the digital age of dating apps and online platforms, the abundance of choices has led to heightened selectivity among both men and women. While having options can be empowering, it also means individuals are often based judged on their profile pictures, their bios, and initial interactions. You get about two seconds to convince her not to swipe on you, or to, or to swipe on you, or to click in, or to DM you, or all of the different platform pieces. And most guys are not marketing geniuses. Most people aren't, you pay people for that. This level of scrutiny and pressure can really create immense pressure for men to stand out in a sea of profiles. And because you're not a marketing genius, that can result in a lot of frustration and self-doubt. Am I worth it? Do I deserve nothing? Am I garbage? All kinds of awful thoughts. If they thought self-esteem was bad for women with Barbies, they have not seen what dating apps do to men's self-esteem. Men today find themselves navigating competitive landscape where they must capture attention swiftly, often reduced to a swipe or a split-second impression. Crafting that engaging profile that showcases your personality, your interests, your unique qualities becomes crucial in the quest to make a memorable first impression immediately. The challenge lies in striking that balance, though, between authenticity and the desire to portray the most attractive version of yourself. More, the pressure to conform to social standards of attractiveness, wealth, and success, and height, and everything can further compound those challenges that men face in online dating. It's essential to recognize true connections are built on more than just appearances, and the people that you want to connect with will see that too. But you've got to reach them carefully. The guys who come into my coaching sessions usually have no idea, for example, how to craft a better dating pool or a better dating site or, or anything. They don't know how to do it. And they don't know how to reach a better dating pool where the pressure is lower because it's more about authenticity and connection. They don't know how to get there. Everything is right TikTok or Tinder kind of approach of swipe. If you don't like it within two seconds, swipe. If if that's where you're trapped, you need to get out of that dating pool. I'm going to show you how. Let me know in the comments if you need help making those better connections with women who aren't shallow. I'd love to hear from you. Men, you have to focus on conveying your genuine self to embrace your individuality and to seek partners who appreciate you for who you are beyond those superficial aspects, but the best version of you. And I know this can feel impossible in the modern world. It's doable. I've walked people through it. I've got their wedding pictures to prove it. This is doable. I'll show you how. Problem number three is emotional vulnerability. In a world that often perpetuates those stereotypes about hard driving masculinity and emotional vulnerability can be a really considerable challenge for men in that dating realm. A lot of guys just don't know how to do it or they're terrified of doing it. Society's expectations have traditionally placed a lot of emphasis on men being strong, independent, in control of their emotions, which is great. I like those things. However, this narrow definition of masculinity can hinder the development of authentic connections and prevent men from expressing their feelings openly. Here's why. I post on Twitter all the time about how to be vulnerable in a solution-focused way, and the negative response is huge. Most men are convinced that women will eat them alive if they show the slightest hesitation or weakness. And that's not really their fault because plenty of unhealthy women will eat you alive for the slightest imperfection or weakness. That's not a problem with women, that's a problem with broken people. Men will do this too. Many men fear that showing vulnerability will be perceived as that sign of weakness or unattractiveness and will lead, unfortunately that leads a lot of them to suppress their emotions or to put on a facade of emotional detachment. I am cool, I am calm, I am James Bond. Not a great place to be, especially if you're trying to build loving relationships. Even if you succeed, you will be trapped in a relationship where you can never be yourself. Not what you need. This fear of judgment and rejection can create those barriers to building those deeper connections that can hinder the growth of meaningful relationships and personal development as well. To overcome this challenge, men must embrace their emotions and recognize the strength in vulnerability. Yes, there is some. It's crucial to cultivate that self-awareness and emotional intelligence to allow yourself to acknowledge and express that range of emotions authentically while maintaining discipline at the same time. There's a, there's a balance point men have to balance a lot. By communicating openly and honestly about your feelings, men can foster an environment of trust and encourage their partner to reciprocate with that emotional openness. This can lead to a lot more fulfilling and intimate connections. Again, there's ways to do this. Sidebar, if this is a challenge for you, and if you especially struggle with insecurity, for example, my book Slaying Your Fear will show you how to crush that. You can check out that book on Amazon. Problem number four, communication misinterpretations. The proliferation of digital communication platforms such as texting, social media, and dating apps has really revolutionized how people connect. 
While these technological advancements do offer convenience, they often present a unique challenge. The potential for misinterpretation, which is much higher, and shallow communication, which is very unfulfilling. Text-based conversations especially often lack that nuance and context of face-to-face -face interactions. That makes it easier for messages to be misunderstood or completely misconstrued. Moreover, the absence of vocal tone, facial expressions, and body language, really important, can create ambiguity, which leads to miscommunication and missed opportunities for deeper connections. A lot of great guys appear awful over text, I'll just say that. I know that the men in my private coaching community have shared that text communication makes the flirting process seem almost impossible for them. Men Men, like anyone else, can struggle with their conveying their intentions, their emotions, and personalities accurately through text-based communication. And the women in the group, my coaching group, feel exactly the same, funny enough. Texting is hard for just about everybody. It's hard to read, hard to write, hard to interpret, hard to, it's, it's very difficult. Especially when you have been struggling, struggling, struggling to get somebody to swipe on your profile, you finally get a connection. You get in the text DMs and you're like, what do I write? And you have to do everything all at once, absolutely perfectly, or blow your one in a hundred chance. The pressure is way too high. It's crucial here to be mindful of how messages might be misinterpreted by the recipient and to practice effective communication techniques. Active listening, asking thoughtful questions, and being aware of the impact of your words can help bridge that communication gap and foster more meaningful exchanges. We'll talk a little bit more about that too. Furthermore, it is essential to recognize that virtual conversations should only serve as a stepping stone to face-to-face -face interactions. I know a lot of women who refuse to do almost any communicating over text. Face-to-face -face is all they will accept because everything else is so shallow and they can either fake it or it cuts out really good men. Moving from digital communication to in-person meetings, or at least video meetings, allows for a more holistic understanding of one another, where those verbal and nonverbal cues can play a significant role in building connections and deepening relationships. And problem number five, unrealistic expectations. In today's media-saturated world where movies, TV shows, and social media platforms often present idealized versions of love and relationships, men can feel tremendous pressure to live up to unrealistic expectations. The influence of these portrayals can lead to feelings of inadequacy, anxiety, and self-doubt. Many men internalize the belief that they need to possess flawless appearances, extraordinary careers, and charismatic personalities to attract any partner. Any partner. <laughs> This pursuit of perfection can become an exhausting and fruitless endeavor as it fails to acknowledge the depth and complexity of real human connections. This all gets so much worse when you introduce porn into the equation. The way that men have to look and act and perform and the expected reactions for women throws a whole male-female dynamic into a tailspin. Nobody knows what's realistic and not anymore. This is especially worse when guys get into that when they're like 12 years old. And that's all they've ever experienced. And that was how they learned about sex. And that's all they know about sex. And they think that is absolutely crucial. You got to go for an hour and a half and she's got to be having the time of her life or it is all over or she will leave you for the next man who will give her the time of her life. It's not usually how most women work, but that's how guys think, unfortunately, a lot of them. It is essential for men to recognize true compatibility and connection extend way far beyond those superficial attributes or porn sex. Building a strong relationship is about embracing imperfections, being authentic, and seeking partners who appreciate and value you for who you truly are. By setting realistic expectations and focusing on genuine compatibility, men can forge meaningful connections that stand the test of time. Now guys, please be honest with me. Where do you stand on these five issues? Have you experienced them yourself? These are the top five that my coaching group faces, but are there some that we haven't mentioned that you are living with or you know your buddies are dealing with? Please let me know in the comments. I really want to hear from you. Okay, here we go. The road to success and how to master modern dating. Now that we've explored the challenges men face in modern dating, it's time to equip you with practical strategies, which is what I do, to navigate this complex landscape. In the following section, I'm gonna dive into actionable steps that you can take to get more attention on your dating apps, build deeper connections, and ultimately foster fulfilling relationships where you can relax and enjoy them. So step number one, optimizing your online presence. In the world of modern dating, your online presence can make a significant impact on your success. Yes, it can. Let's dive into the art of optimizing your online presence to attract genuine interest and build meaningful connections. First, let's focus on selecting the right profile picture. Choose photos that showcase your personality, your interests, and your lifestyle. Authenticity is really key here. So avoid heavily filtered photos or misleading images. 
And by presenting your genuine, genuine self, you are going to attract people who like you for who you are. So don't do that like I'm in a group of my more handsome buddies and don't specify who I am. A lot of women do that one. Don't just do a photo of your abs with no face. Don't do you waving money at the camera. <laughs> you. Uh, I, I have a whole section, a whole video just on online presence. If you check it out earlier, a little bit earlier on this channel, how to optimize your online bio and get way more attention. If you want more info, check that out. It goes deeper even into your profile photos because there's an art to it. Next, let's craft a compelling bio that reflects your personality. Please, in this case, be concise and share what you want, what your goals are in life and in the relationship and then share maybe a couple cool facts about your life that show that you are stable. Showcase your passions and values to help potential partners connect with you on a deeper level, but they have to loop back around to showing your values, your stability, your suitability as a partner. Don't just start listing hobbies. That's useless at this point. Remember that your bio serves as a conversation starter, so make it engaging and very easy to respond to. Last, optimize your profile by highlighting your unique qualities and interests. Share anecdotes, hobbies, and interests and experience that set you apart from the crowd. Again, tie this back to how this makes you a good partner, not just random. This will pique curiosity from people and encourage like-minded individuals to reach out. But remember, it's not about appealing to everyone. It's about attracting those who truly appreciate and resonate with you. By optimizing your online presence, you're going to increase your chances of finding genuine connections and building fulfilling relationships. A lot of the men in my attachment circle discord community post their dating profiles in there and then they get help optimizing them. So if you're looking to stop flying solo and get some pro help on making your profile get attention, grab a one month membership and join us. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the art of optimizing your online presence to attract genuine interest and build meaningful connections with a little bit of an advanced approach here. Take a moment to assess your current, current dating profile. Don't change it real quick. Just look at it as it is. Does it truly reflect who you are and what you're looking for in a partner. Better way to say this is if you were applying for a job, would they know you were a good fit or is it just random information about you? Your task here is to post an example of your dating profile in the comment section below, if you're brave. The community and I here can review it and provide a little bit of feedback to help you make improvements. Remember that authenticity is key, so don't be afraid to showcase your unique qualities and interests and how they make you a good partner. Let's work together. We'll create a profile together that stands out and captures the attention of potential matches. This will be fun. Do it if you have the courage to do it. I know it's a little, a little, well, frightening, but I'd be happy to talk with you there. And everybody else in the community, be nice. Let's help each other. Part number two is mastering the art of conversation. This is where a lot of men fall flat. Effective communication is the foundation of any successful relationship. To master the art of conversation, it is essential to develop things like active listening skills and th asking thought-provoking questions. We call, um, motivational interviewing is a great example of this. Engaging in genuine curiosity about your partner's interests, aspirations, and experiences is a great way to really connect them in the conversation. And by actively listening and showing genuine interest, you can create an environment where both individuals feel heard and understood. In addition to listening, don't hesitate to share your thoughts and opinions. Often Authenticity and vulnerability are key components of meaningful conversations. Express your feelings and perspectives honestly and tactfully to create an atmosphere of openness and trust. Remember, it's not about trying to impress or dominate the conversation. It's about fostering a genuine connection by engaging in thoughtful and balanced dialogue. Lastly, please be aware of nonverbal cues like body language. Pay attention to your partner's or, or dating partner's gestures, facial expressions, and tone of voice. These subtle cues provide valuable insights into their emotions and thoughts. By being attuned to nonverbal communication, you can respond empathetically and establish a deeper connection. Mastering the art of conversation allows you to build stronger relationships based on mutual understanding, respect, and shared interests. And I have another video here on this channel. I believe it is called uh, how to tell when she's being nice or she's into you. How to tell if she's into you. It was recent, just recently posted, maybe the last couple of months, maybe. Um, check that out. That will help you in this figuring out all those nonverbal pieces and what she means when she's talking to you. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into mastering the art of conversation here. Your task for this section is to engage in a meaningful conversation with somebody close to you, a friend, a family member, even a romantic interest. Take the time to actively listen. Ask some thought-provoking questions and create an open, supportive environment. After your conversation, come back and share your experience in the comment section. 
What did you learn from that conversation? Did you discover something new about the other person? How did active listening and asking thoughtful questions contribute to a deeper connection for you in that moment? I look forward to reading your insights and experiences. We'll be nice. Section number three, navigating the first three dates. This is a big one. The first three dates lay the groundwork for a potential long-term relationship. To navigate these crucial stages successfully, focus on building a solid foundation. Start by planning memorable dates that align with your shared interests and values. By putting thought and effort into creating unique experiences, you can show your partner that you genuinely care and you're interested in the relationship. Some people might choose miniature golf, for example, to get to know each other over a game, while other people go for a walk in a public park to make their date feel comfortable. Other people choose group dates with mutual friends. I recommend that one so that you can see each other interact with strangers and people you know, and you have data on them a little bit and they can't lie to you. That's also a good one. All of these can help set your date apart from just, hey, let's go out for drinks. During the early dates especially, aim to establish emotional honesty. Share personal stories, dreams, and aspirations, and allow yourself to connect on a little bit of a deeper level by being honest about you. Be vulnerable and open in a, in a bit, fostering trust and a sense of security. So tell them what you really think and feel. You don't have to cry at the table. Remember to build a strong emotional bond and that this takes time and mutual effort. So don't freak out if it's not perfect on the first or second date, but make the effort toward building a better relationship over time. When everybody else is being entertaining, but shallow, you can be the person who's authentic and tells stories that reveal something about your life, your values, and who you will be in the relationship with them. A lot bigger. Effective communication is also vital during the early stages. Please please, please remember to clearly express your intentions and expectations for the relationship while also respecting your partner's boundaries. If you are looking for a committed relationship, let them know that's your goal. Honest and open dialogue helps both individuals to navigate potential misunderstandings and ensures that you're on the same page. Last, please take things at a pace that feels comfortable for both of you. Rushing into a relationship, either because you think they want you to or because they've said they want you to, or because you're afraid of losing their interest, that can lead to missed opportunities for genuine connection. You can screw things up early. Allow the relationship to develop organically without fear and take the time to get to know each other on a deeper level talk to each other about how comfortable you are and about what pace feels right. By navigating the first three dates with intention and care, you can increase the likelihood of building a strong and meaningful relationship. Now, a lot of guys who look for help moving from the first date into commitment, hop into my coaching and do a couple quick sessions if you need to optimize your game. If you want my help, schedule a session, let's get started. Your task for this section is to plan a memorable and creative date for the next stage of your dating journey. Consider your partner's interests, shared hobbies, or something unique that you both can experience together. Remember, some people talk about uh, miniature golf, for example. I wouldn't say an escape room on the first date, but miniature golf might be a good option. Once you've planned your date, share your ideas in the comment section below. Tell us what you have in mind and why you think it will create a lasting impression. I'm excited to see the creativity and thoughtfulness that goes into planning your date and the impact it has on your connection. And if there are any women watching this, you are welcome to scroll down and help men with all of these tasks that we've talked about, but especially would you enjoy this date? Would you, ladies, enjoy this date? Pop in and let us know. Yeah, I would enjoy that date, sir. To the man who's uh, commenting on, I don't know, laser tag or something like that. Step number four, honing emotional intelligence. I told you it was going to be here. Emotional intelligence plays a crucial role in modern dating. At least it does. Allowing you to navigate complex emotions, to understand your partner's needs, and to foster a secure and fulfilling relationship. Start by developing your self-awareness. Recognize and understand your own emotions, your triggers, and your patterns of behavior. By knowing yourself deeply, you can better communicate those needs and desires to your partner, and it will help you understand others. Empathy is another vital aspect of emotional intelligence. You have to do the first self-work first for empathy to really grow. Put yourself in your partner's shoes and strive to understand their perspective. How would you feel if blank? Listen attentively, validate those emotions that they feel and provide support when needed. Cultivating this empathy strengthens the emotional connection between both individuals and creates an environment of understanding and compassion. Managing conflict effectively is another key component of emotional intelligence. <laughs> yes, it is. Learn to communicate assertively yet respectfully, expressing your feelings and needs without aggression or defensiveness. When disagreements do arise, and they will, focus on finding solutions rather than winning the arguments. 
By approaching conflicts with empathy and a willingness to compromise, you can foster a sense of security and mutual growth within the relationship. Remember that emotional intelligence is a lifelong journey of self-discovery and growth. By honing your emotional intelligence, you can develop the skills necessary to build and maintain secure and fulfilling relationships. To deepen your emotional intelligence, your task here is to practice mindfulness and self-reflection. Set aside some time each day for quiet reflection, meditation, or journaling, whatever works for you. After your mindfulness practice, share your reflections here or your insights in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. How did the practice of mindfulness enhance any aspect of self-awareness for you? and especially your understanding of your own emotions or, or feelings or emotional experiences. What new insights did you gain about yourself? I encourage you to engage in a supportive discussion with other people in the comment section, keyword supportive people, and share your experiences lear and learning with one another. Gentlemen, by understanding and applying these teachings, you're gonna be well on your way to mastering modern dating and building more fulfilling and secure relationships. Success in dating goes beyond mere attraction, well beyond. It's about nurturing connections based on trust, authenticity, and emotional intimacy. And by completing these exercises that I put in here today that I've outlined, you can engage in the comment sections and you're gonna deepen your understanding of the concepts that we discussed. You're also gonna foster a spirit of support and growth among our community here, which is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to reading your comments and providing guidance along the way. You also can pop into any of my live events. I do these at least once a week, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. I go live with live Q&As. You can pop in there and hit me with questions from this. I'd love to see you. You can also hit me up in comments anywhere on any video or by email at support at adamlanesmith.com or on any of my platforms if you need more help with dating. I've helped thousands of men in their pursuit of better dating results, and I'll be glad to help you too in whatever way you need. I will catch you in the next video, and for now, enjoy your dates.